Today is January 17th. It's the 17th day of the year, and this is the On This Day podcast. The Science and Security Board of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, a non-technical academic journal, decide to reset the hands on the doomsday clock from seven minutes before midnight to five minutes before midnight on this day in 2007. This resetting of the doomsday clock comes in response to several global issues, including the testing of a nuclear weapon by North Korea in October of 2006. The Science and Security Board meets twice a year to review global events, events that could have an impact on the survival of mankind. They deliberate on the events, and afterwards, the doomsday clock is either left alone or reset to reflect how close mankind is coming to destroying the world with dangerous man-made technologies. The clock is not a real clock, but rather a metaphor to remind the global population of the perils affecting our survival on Earth. In 2006, North Korea gives the People's Republic of China a 20-minute advance warning that their nuclear test is about to commence. China immediately alerts Washington, D.C. through the U.S. Embassy in Beijing. The U.S. National Security Advisor, Stephen Hadley, warns President George W. Bush that the nuclear test is imminent. Mere minutes are left to prepare for it, or, if necessary, to respond. Back in 1947, the Bulletin's co-editor, Hyman Goldsmith, asks the wife of physicist Alexander Langsdorff to create a design for the cover of their June 1947 issue. Alexander Langsdorff had worked on the Manhattan Project, the World War II research and development project that leads to the creation of the world's first nuclear weapons. And his wife, Martel Langsdorff, is an artist, and she begins work on the cover design. Initially thinking of using the symbol for uranium, she's swayed by the passionate discussion among scientists who worked on the bomb. Their debate about the consequences of this new technology and their responsibility to inform the public leaves Martel with a feeling of urgency. Time is of the essence, and a clock seems a most appropriate symbol. Eugene Rabinovich, a co-founder of the Bulletin, explains, The Bulletin's clock is not a gauge to register the ups and downs of the international power struggle. It's intended to reflect basic changes in the level of continuous danger in which mankind lives in the nuclear age. When the Doomsday Clock debuts in June 1947, its hands are set to seven minutes to midnight. Since its inception, the clock hands are reset 21 different times. In 1953, the clock is set for two minutes to midnight reflecting just how close the world is coming to destruction. In 1991, the U.S. and Soviet Union signed the first Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, and by the end of the year, the Soviet Union is dissolved. The Doomsday Clock is reset to 17 minutes to midnight, its furthest point away from peril since its creation. The Bulletin ends its print edition in 2009 and goes digital. It's one of the first print publications in the U.S. to be entirely online bulletin.org. Two years earlier, on this day in 2007, the doomsday clock is reset to five minutes to midnight in response to North Korea's nuclear test the prior year. But it isn't just North Korea's actions that lead to this reset. Global threats reviewed at this time include Iran's nuclear ambitions, renewed emphasis by the U.S. on the military utility of nuclear weapons, the global failure to adequately secure nuclear materials, the continued presence of approximately 26,000 nuclear weapons in the U.S. and Russia, and the dangers posed to civilization by climate change. And since then, it's only gotten worse. As of January 2015, the doomsday clock is now set to three minutes to midnight. There are 348 days left in the year. 
On This Day is produced by me, Dave Schultz. Thank you very much for listening. Today's episode, written by Elizabeth Schultz. Hashtag Lizzie B. On this day in 1961, President Dwight D. Eisenhower delivers his farewell speech to the nation, warning Americans against the dangers of deficit spending, as well as the dangers of the accumulation of power by what he calls the military-industrial complex. According to Eisenhower, we must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. We should take nothing for granted. So if you're still listening, shelter in place. Talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.